This is module five, lesson five. Where we're gonna compare two different functions presented different ways. Uh, you'll be comparing the um, y-intercept, which is your b, and you will be comparing your slopes or your rates of change. And in some cases, you'll be comparing things you can calculate with them. Now, uh, first one here. Says Carlos's annual membership to the Science Museum can be represented by the function C equals 29.99, where C represents the cost in dollars. So this is the cost in dollars. The cost for Stephanie to pay per visit shown in the table here. So this is Stephanie. I always make myself notes so I know who's who's. What I really want you to do first is through my making this table. I want us to actually write the linear equation for each. If we're talking about Carlos, okay, his membership. If this is a linear equation, y is equal to mx plus b. Let's look at Carlos. It says for Carlos, the cost is equal to 29.99. Okay, instead of y, they're using c. So let's erase this y. We're going to call it c. Hold on. And let's see, we're gonna we're gonna erase x. I'm gonna call it v for number of visits. How about that? Okay. Just rewrite this. And we're gonna say it is the cost is equal to um, your rate of change times the number of visits plus b. Okay, so we need to find m and b, right? Well, our initial cost is 29.99. And then he doesn't pay any more, right? So our B is $29.99. That's, that's what he's going to start out paying, right? That's his annual cost. Now, his rate of change, how much does he pay per visit? Zero. He's not going to pay anything per visit, right? If he pays his annual membership B. Zero times B would give you zero. So that's gone. C is simply equal to $29.99. So see, our M was zero. Our B was $29.99. That's for Carlos. Now let's talk about Stephanie. In Stephanie's case, let's write us a linear equation for this. C is equal to our rate of change times the number of visits plus B. You could start it as Y is equal to MX plus B, but we use C for the Y and B for the X, didn't we? Let's look at our chart here. For our B, that's going to be when we have zero visits. Well, our cost at zero visits would be zero dollars. If you work your way backwards, third visit is $15 by the second visit is 10. See, it's going to run five each time. First visit is five. Zero would be zero. So our B is zero. I'm going to put this over here. B is equal to zero. Okay. Now we need to know what our M is. We know that our M is our rate of change. Change in Y over change in X. If this is basically your X and this is your Y, then the change in y would be right here, 10 minus 5. We subtracted the y values, found the difference in them. If I started with 10 over here, I'd have to start with a 2, 2 minus 1. Notice the 10 and the 2 are both on the same unit, or the same coordinates. That's 2, 10, 1, 5. See how they're in the same place? Okay, 10 minus 5 is 5, 2 minus 1 is 1. 5 divided by 1 is 5. So our rate of change is 5. This means she's paying $5 per, per, per visit, but she has no initial cost. Her cost is going to be $5 per visit. You multiply 5 times the number she visits, how many times she goes. Describe the rate of change for each function. Carlos's rate of change is 0. Okay. Stephanie's, Stephanie's rate of change is $5 per 
per visit, right? Each visit costs $5. Who pays more for two visits? Well, let's look. Stephanie pays $10 for two visits. Carlos plays $29.99, period. So no matter how many times he visits, it's $29.99. So after two visits, Carlos has paid $29.99. That's what he paid for his yearly fee. Stephanie has paid $10, right? Five, $5 per visit times two visits. Five times two would give me 10, would it? So Stephanie has paid $10 after two visits. If they're only going to go twice, Stephanie has a better deal, right? Who pays more for six visits? Now remember, Carlos simply pays $29.99 no matter how many times he goes. Stephanie, on the other hand, she's paying $5 per visit. So that would be five times six, which would give us 30. So Stephanie would pay $30, total of $30 if she visited six times, all right? Okay. Let's look at this next one. A zebra's main predator is a lion. Lions can run at a speed of 53 feet per second. Okay, there's his rate of change, his M. The graph at the right shows the speed of a zebra. Compare their speeds. Okay, let's just talk about their speeds. That would be their rate of change. For a lion, it says exactly what it is, 53 feet per second. That's our M, right? If I were going to write a linear equation, that's your, linear, that's your slope, your rate of change. How about here for the zebra? Let's find our M. Um, let's find our rate of change for the zebra. When we talk about the rate of change, your M is your change in Y over change in X. Okay, let's choose two points here. I've got 159 and 2, 118. I can use that or I can use this 0, 0. Either one will work. Let's go to 159 and 118. Here's your X, here's your Y. There's your X, there's your Y. 118 minus 59 over, see those are your Y's, you found the difference in your Y's. If you started with the 118, you got to start with the 2. 2 minus 1. See, 118, 2 is on one point. 2, uh, let's see. 59, 1 is the other point, right? 118 minus 59. We'll give you 59. 2 minus 1 gives you 1. Okay, 59 divided by 1 means that our slope is 59. And that's 59, what, Y over X feet per second. Which one runs faster? in short burst, the zebra, okay? Let's look down here. A certain car has a gas mileage of 22 miles per gallon. The gas mileage of a certain SUV, so here's the SUV, is represented by the function shown. Compare their gas mileage. Well, it says that the car, and it told it to us, is 22 miles per gallon. That means you get 22 miles on one gallon on average. Now let's find the uh, let's find the rate of change for the SUV. Remember, we're talking about the M because that's your rate of change. Change in Y over change in X. Now, here's my X, here's my Y. Here's my X, here's my Y. I would say 38 minus 19. Over, let's see, we started with 38, so we start with X on this one. 2 minus 1. 38 minus 19 is 19. 2 minus 1 is 1. So my M is equal to 19. That would be 19, and you're changing Y. That's miles, 19 miles. That's on your Y axis over what's on your X axis, miles per gallon. Okay? 
So the car gets 22 miles per, per gallon, gallon, the SUV gets 19. This one obviously gets better uh, gas mileage. Here's an example. And I'm going to tell you this. This is the function M is equal to 140A, just for M miles. I don't like using M here, guys, because we're used to that being our rate of change. So I'm going to call this uh, D, because this is the distance, okay? We'll say D is the distance traveled, is the miles traveled in hours, okay? Let's look at this. Let's write, we've got our equation. The function D is equal to 140H is where D is the miles traveled in H hours. Represents the distance traveled of the first Japanese high-speed train. Okay, so our Japanese train, it travels, here's its, here's its rate. Distance is equal to 140 times H. The distance traveled of a high-speed train operating today in China is shown in the table. Assume the relationship between the two is linear. So let's talk about a Chinese train. Let's write an equation here. The distance would be equal to, now we know it's going to be mx. Whenever we're doing this, is y is equal to mx plus b. We use distance for the y. We know our b is zero because you start at zero, dis, at d, zero miles away whenever the train's running. So we're looking for our m. Our m, as we know, is our change in y over change in x. If here is your x and here's your y, you find the difference in these. 434 minus 217 over we go from here to here. So 434 goes with the 2. 2 minus 1. 434 minus 217 would be 217. 2 minus 1 is 1. So the M is 217. Okay? In place of our M, we'd be 217. The distance traveled by the Chinese train would be 217 miles per hour times the number of mile, hours that you travel. Now it says, compare the functions y-intercepts and rates of change. Well, what would the y-intercept be on each of these? We started at zero miles traveled, right? So your y-intercept is zero. D would be 140H plus zero. For the Chinese train, your distance is 217H plus zero. Okay, y-intercepts. are both zero. Because at zero time, or zero hours, the trains have each traveled zero miles, okay? At the beginning, they hadn't traveled any miles, okay? Then it asked about the rates of change, right? The Japanese tra train's rate of change is 140, and that is miles per hour. The Chinese train is 217 miles per hour. Which one is going faster? The Chinese train. Then at the bottom it asks us, if you ride each train for five hours, how far will you travel? Okay, for five hours. Well, where would we put in the hours? The H or the D? It said here that H was hours, so we plug it in for the hours, right? On the Japanese train, our distance would be equal to 140 times H. And that's 140 times 5. 140 times 5 would give you 700 miles. You will have traveled 700 miles. Now, 
Let's see about the other one. Distance is equal to, on the Chinese train, 217 miles per hour times the number of hours. Well, if we're talking five hours, we'd multiply 217 times five. And our distance would be 1,085 miles. Very simple. Okay. The number of new movies a store receives can be represented by the function m is equal to 7w plus 2. Well, in this case, you're talking about this m being the number of movies. I'm just going to call it films instead because I think that makes more sense for us. I don't like having m being used for anything except for um, except for slope or a rate of change. So for movies, so let's compare the functions y intercepts and rate of change. Let's give their equations first. For movies or films, the equation is let's say f is equal to 7w plus 2, where 2 where w is the number of weeks. Okay, so this represents the number of movies and W represents the number of weeks, okay? So we've got new movies coming into a store. What does this tell me? They start with two movies and each week they get seven new movies. That's seven new movies per week, okay? Well, let's try this one here. This is about games, okay? Games, and you know for an equation, it's MX plus B. What do we start with here? At week zero, what would we be starting with? Well, look at this. If you work your way backwards, at, at week two, you got six. Subtract three from it. Week one, you got three. Subtract three from that. Week zero, you got zero. So we're starting with zero games. Let's find our M, our rate of change. Your rate of change is always change in Y over change in X. Your first letter is your X, your second is your Y. So what we do is we subtract those. Your difference in your Y's would be six minus three. See, I've subtracted your Y's. Here, I subtract your X's. Six was the first one I used, so I used two first here. Six minus three over two minus one. Six minus three is three, two minus one is one, which gives us M is three. What this tells us is that each week we receive three new games, three games per week, okay? You started with zero. Here's my two equations. These are the two equations that we're talking about. This is for games. This is for movies, or in our case, we call them films. Compare the functions y-intercepts, okay? Let's talk about the y-intercepts. The y-intercepts are the b's, right? And this one is two. For movies, it's two, which means we're starting with two movies. Start with two movies. On the games, it's zero, right? Games. It's zero. Start with zero games. See, because remember, B is that where we begin. Your y-intercept is your B. It's where you begin. Your rate of change is your M. Okay, so let's talk about our rate of change. For movies, your rate of change is seven. What does that mean? Seven movies per what? Represents the number of movies and W is the number of weeks. Seven movies per week. <coughs> okay. <coughs> what does the three on the games represent? That's three games per week. That means I'm getting seven new movies per week, three new games per week. That's what the rate of change tells me. 
how many new movies and games will the store have in week six? Okay, so let's try this. Movies. F is equal to 7W plus 2. So the number of weeks is 6. We plug it in here. F is equal to 7 times 6 plus 2. 7 times 6 is 42 plus 2 gives you 44. How about games? Let's try games. Number of games is equal to 3X. And what is X? X was our number of weeks, right? We get three games per week. If I multiply that times my six weeks, I would have a total of 18 games, okay? After, after the week six, I'd have 44 movies, 18 games. Let's look at this third one, financial literacy. Angela and Benjamin each have a monthly cell phone bill. Angela's monthly cell phone bill is represented by this function. Okay, so here's Angela's. Her bill, what she's going to pay is equal to X represents minutes, Y's cost. Okay, so this is 15 cents per minute times the number of minutes, plus she pays a $49 flat fee, right? Benjamin's is shown here, so let's write the equation for Benjamin's. So we'll know what's going on. We start with y is equal to mx plus b. Our b is where it crosses the y-axis. Remember, where it crosses the y-axis will be the point zero b. Okay, so where do we have zero? Right here for the x, at 60. That's where it's crossing the y-axis. Our b is 60. See, that's where it it begins where it crosses the y-axis. We still need to find m. m is equal to change in y over change in x. Let's find two points. Here's my xy for this one. Here's my xy for this one. Let's find the difference in the y value, 72 minus 60. And if you started with 72 on the x's, you got to start with the same uh, coordinate, same point, 120 over 0. 72 minus 60 gives us 12. 120 minus 0 is 120. 12 over 120 is 0.10. So that's 10 cents, right? Y is equal to, here's our M, 10 cents per minute times the number of minutes plus $60. That would give me the total cost for Benjamin's bill. Okay. Compare the y-intercepts and rates of changes. The y-intercepts on these two, that's going to be how much the bill is going to be, the start of the bill. This bill is going to start at $49, and you're going to add to it 15 cents per minute times the number of minutes. This bill starts at $60, and you're going to add to it 10 cents a minute times the number of minutes. So the y-intercepts, the B values, where you begin, okay? Let's see. For Angela, it is $49. For Benjamin, it is $60, okay? The rates of change. Angela's rate of change is 15 cents per what? Per minute, right? 15 cents per minute. How about Benjamin? His is 10 cents per minute. Okay. Then it says, what will the monthly cost for Angela and Benjamin be for 200 minutes? Okay, well, let's plug 200 minutes in here. Where does the minutes go in for the X or the Y? Well, here it says X represent minutes, and here on the chart it says minutes is the on the X axis. So minutes goes in for the X. Y is equal to 15 cents per minute 
times 200 minutes plus the $49 flat fee. 15 cents per minute times 200 is 30 plus the 49 would give you $79 for Angela. How about for Benjamin? His is 10 cents per minute times 60. Okay, let's do that over here for Benjamin. I'll put Benjamin over here. His is, total cost is 10 cents per minute times the number of minutes plus $60. The $60 is the flat fee. So we would plug the 200 minutes in for the X and we'd add 60 to it. 10 cents a minute times 200 minutes and add 60 to that. And I've got a bill of $80. So whose bill was cheaper at 200 minutes? Angela's bill. Mandy and Sarah each have a membership to the gym. Mandy's membership is represented by this function. Y is equal to 3X plus 29, where X represents hours and Y uh, represents the total cost. This is hours with a trainer. So look, Mandy's paying $29 flat fee, but she pays $3 per hour for the trainer, right? That's her total cost, all right? I'm going to do this here. I'm going to put this stuff down here. Mandy. And then we're talking about Sarah. Let's compare them all. Okay. Mandy's equation is Y is equal to 3X plus 29. Let's find the equation for Sarah's. We know it's a linear equation. See, it's a line. Y is equal to MX plus B. Our B, remember, is where this crosses the y-axis is at the point zero B. It crosses right here. That looks like 40, but this tells me it's actually at 39. Okay, the B is 39, so let's plug it in. We need to find our M. Our M is changing Y over changing X. Okay, here's our X and Y on this point. Here's our X and Y on that one. So let's find our difference in our Y's. 51 minus 39 over, and if I started with 51, then on the bottom, we've got to start with 4. 4 minus 0. 51 minus 39 is 12. Okay. And 4 minus 0 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So our M is 3. Let's plug it in. The equation for Sarah's Y is equal to 3X plus 39. Okay, they asked me for my Y intercept, which is my B. In this case, the B is 29. That means Mandy had a $29 flat fee for her, for her uh, membership. Sarah has a $39 flat fee for her membership. Okay, how about the rate of change? That's your M. Mandy's rate of change is $3 per hour. Sarah's is also $3 per hour. So their rates of change are the same. Sarah just had to pay more. Maybe Mandy caught it on a discount when she bought her membership and she got to pay $29 flat fee. And Sarah didn't get that discount, and she had to pay the $39 flat fee. What will be the total cost for Mandy and Sarah is they each have four hours with the trainer? Well, let's see. We're dealing with Mandy. Y is equal to 3X plus 29. Hours. Is that our X or Y? Look, well, you can see on your chart here, hours are on the X here. It also says up here, X represents hours. Okay, so we plug that in. Y is equal to three times, and it's four hours. Three down four plus 29. That's 12 plus 29. If you added 12 and 29, you would get 41. Y is 41. $41 
from Mandy. But let me ask you, even without doing the calculations, could you tell me what it would be for Sarah? Hers is just $10 more, right? So it should be 51. Let's try. Y is equal to 3X plus 39. Y is equal to 3 times 4 plus 39. Y is equal to 12 plus 39. 12 plus 39. That gives you 51. Y is equal to $51. Okay? Let's look at number four down here. Lorena's mother needs to rent a truck to move some furniture. The cost to rent a truck from two different companies is shown in the table and graph. So we got a table and a graph now. Which company should she use to rent the truck for 40 miles? Okay, so we got Crosstown Movers and Rons. Let's write the equation for Crosstown. First, let's write the equation, okay? We know we start with Y is equal to MX plus B. Crosstown, what is our B? Well, it looks like it's 30, doesn't it? Okay. Let's see. And let's find our M, our rate of change. We've got two points here. This is my X and that's my Y. Here's my X and here's my Y. My M would be equal to the difference in my Y values over the difference in my X values. 45 minus 35 would be my Y's. You start with 45, you got to start back with the same point. 30 minus 10 over would be the difference in my X's. 45 minus 35 is 10. 30 minus 10 is 20. Okay, that gives me one half or 0.5. Okay, Y is equal to one half X plus 30, okay? Let's do the one for Ron's rentals, okay? See what we can get down here. We start with Y is equal to MX plus B. What is our B? Okay, we've got to figure out what our B is. Let's work our way backwards. For each 10, this is going down 25, okay? So if I go down another 10 to zero, I'm going back tw another 25, so it starts at zero. The B for Ron's Reynolds is zero. We've got to figure out our M. M is equal to change in Y over change in X. How do I find that here? Well, here's my X, here's my Y. I find the difference in my X and my Y, okay? The difference there would be 75 minus 50 over 30 minus 20. That would give me 25 over 10. That would give me, if I divide that, I've got 2.5, okay? Y is equal to 2.5X. And the plus zero doesn't matter here, right? Okay, there's my two equations. They want to know which one is cost, going to cost more if we are uh, going for 40 miles, right? Okay. So let's work on this. Let's, let's plug it in for each of these. Y is equal to 1 half times 40 plus 30. Okay. Half of 40 would be 20 plus 30, which would be $50. Okay, so it would be $50 if I used, which one? Crosstown. Okay. Let's try for 40 miles here. Y is equal to 2.5 times 40. You multiply 2.5 times 40. Let's do that. 
you get a hundred dollars, right? Y is equal to a hundred dollars. Okay, so it would be cheaper to use which one? It would be cheaper to use Frosttown. They're fifty dollars. Ron's is a hundred dollars for forty miles. Let's try this one. A tiger in captivity is fed 13 and a half pounds of food a day. The graph uh, shows the pounds of food an elephant gets each day. So this is your elephant. Compare the functions by comparing their rates of change. Okay, for the tiger, what is our rate of change? 13.5 pounds per day. Oops, let's make let's put pounds here so we know what we're doing. 13.5 pounds per day. How about the elephant? Well, to find the rate of change, we need to find the M. We know our M is change in Y over change in X. Okay, here's our X, here's our Y. On another point, here's our X and Y. So I could say 250 minus 125 for my change in Y. This is my change in Y. 250 minus 125. If I started with 250, on the bottom I got to start with 2. 2 minus 1. 250 minus 125 would be 125. 2 minus 1 is 1. An elephant would get 125 pounds per day. Okay, that's the difference between the two. That compares the two uh, rates of change. Which one gets more? The elephant by a long shot. Carol's profit at a craft fair is represented by the function P is equal to 5B minus 15, where P is her profit, B is the number of bracelets she sells. So let's think about what this means. If B is the number of bracelets she sells, she must be uh, making $5, getting $5 per each bracelet. But then for her profit, she's got to subtract out 15. That means she spent $15 making them, didn't it? Okay. So this is Carol. This is Kate. Let's see what Kate does. Okay, Kate. How much is this going back? Four bracelets is $20. Three bracelets is $15. So it's going back five each time. Two bracelets is $10. One bracelet is five. Zero bracelets then would be zero. It didn't cost her anything to make hers. Okay. Let's write the equation for Kate's. Y is equal to MX plus B. Kate's didn't cost anything. It's plus zero. Let's find the M, the rate in change. Change in Y, rate of change. Change in Y over change in X. Okay, this would be my X, this would be my Y. The difference here would be 10 minus 5 on our Y. 10 corresponds to the 2. This is one data point. So 2 minus 1. See how the 10 and the 2 were on top of each other, the 5 and the 1 are on top of each other? 10 minus 5 is 5. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so what we're looking at is 5 over 1. That would be 5x, okay? Or 5 times the number of bracelets. You can use the same thing she's got here. Profits is equal to 5 times the number of bracelets, but plus 0, okay? Carol had to pay $15 to make hers, or she's out $15. Uh, Kate didn't, okay? They're both charging $5. Compare the y-intercepts. Carol has negative 15 uh, for her y-intercept, okay? Oh. Let's see, y-intercept, we'll put y-intercept here. Kate has zero. Let's talk about the rates of change. Carol, her rate of change is five. Let's see, profit, P is profit, B is the number of bracelets she sells, okay? So she's getting $5 per 
per bracelet. Okay, she's profiting five dollars per bracelet. Kate is profit profiting five dollars per bracelet. Okay, that's what their profit profit is. Maybe Carol had to spend fifteen dollars on advertising or something, and that takes away from her total profits. Uh, something like that. But anyway, Carol has to take fifteen dollars away from what you would think her total profit would be from five dollars per bracelet. How much will each girl make if she sells 30 bracelets? Okay, for Carol, let's try this. Her profit would be five times 30 minus 15. That's 150 minus 15, which is 135. Let's see about Kate. Kate sells 30 bracelets. She's, let's plug it in here. Uh, profit is equal to 5B, right? Her profit would be equal to 5 times 30, which is 150. She gets $150 profit, okay? See, $15 more than Carol. The cost to rent a raft from two different companies is shown. Which company should you use if you rent the raft for nine hours? Okay. Well, let's try here. Let's do water's edge. Let's do, let's find our equation. Y is equal to MX plus B. Our B, oh, it starts at zero, so there's no initial B. Let's find our slope, okay? Let's find our rate of change. Here's two points right here. X, Y, X, Y, all right? M is equal to change in Y over change in x. Our change in y would be 18 minus 6 over 18 minus 6 over 3 minus 1. 18 minus 6 would be 12. 3 minus 1 would be 2. That would be 6. So our m is 6. y is equal to 6x plus 0. This is for water edge. How about for Ryan's rafts? y is equal to mx plus b. Okay, now our B, let's see if we can figure out what our B is here. How much is it changing for each one of these? It's going down, let's see, from two to three, it's went down, let's see, uh, 225, 225, so let's subtract 225 from 15 to get to zero. If I subtract 225 from 15, 15 minus 225 would give me 1275, okay? Let's see. Okay. So my B is 1275. My M. The difference in our y's over the difference in our x's. You know, m's difference in your y's over the difference in your x's. Let's see, I could do 1725 minus 15 over 2 minus 1. That would give me 225 over 1, which is just 225. Okay, now we're talking about nine hours. So let's go water's edge. Our equation is y is equal to 6x plus zero. That'd be y is equal to six times nine plus zero. Six times nine is 54. We're going to think it's $54. Okay, that's what it would cost for nine hours from Water's Edge. Now let's try Ryan's rafts. Y is equal to, let's see, my equation is 225, okay, X plus 1275. That would be, 225 
times 9 plus 1275. Okay, 225 times 9. Okay, plus 1275 would give us $33. Okay, so you get a better deal from Ryan's Rafts. It'd be $33 as compared to $54 if you go with Water's Edge. Okay, and then the last page of the packet compare properties of functions. Cassie is downloading music and games onto her phone. It costs 99 cents to download a song. The cost of downloading games are shown in the graph. Compare the functions for each kind of downloading by comparing the cost. Okay, 99 cents to download a song. Compare the functions for, uh, we want the cost, okay? It's just 99 cents. That is her M. That is her rate of change. 99 cents. Uh, per song, right? So the cost, let's say the cost would be 99 cents per song times the number of songs, right? How about games, cost of downloading games? All we really need is the cost would be equal to MX plus B. Our B is obviously zero, just like it was here. We need to find the M. We know our M is changing Y over changing X. And this is our X and our Y. Let's find the difference in our Y values. That would be 318 minus $1.59 divided by 2 over 1. 318 minus 159. is $1.59 over one. So it costs $1.59, the cost is gonna be $1.59 times the number of games you download. Which one's more expensive? The games. $1.59 times the number of games is what you'd be costing in games. 99 cents times the number of songs is what you have in songs. The number of gallons Y a pool drains in X minutes, gallons Y, X minutes, is represented by the function Y is equal to 20X. The table shows the time it takes to fill up a pool. Compare the functions for each process by comparing the times, okay? All right, let's see. If it takes, to drain a pool takes Y is equal to 20 gallons per minute times the number of minutes. Okay, now filling the pool, all we're needing is to figure out the rate of change here. Our M is change in Y over change in X. Filling this pool from 30 minus 15 gallons. That's your Y's, here's your X's, here's your Y's. Two minus one minutes. That's 15 gallons per minute, right? So here it's 20 gallons per minute to drain it. Here's 15 gallons per minute to fill it. So it takes uh, more time. It's going to be slower process in filling it than in draining it. The speeds of a coyote and a giraffe are shown in the graph and table below. Compare them by comparing the rates of change. Okay, let's get our M for this one. Here's our X and Y for this point, X and Y for this one. M is changing Y over changing X. Our change in Y will be 43 minus zero. Your change in X is one minus zero. That gives you 43 over one. That's 43 miles per hour. Okay, now let's try the speed of a giraffe. We need to find the M. Let's do change in Y over change in X. That would be 32 minus 16 over 1 minus 0 
That gives me 16 over 0 0.5. 16 divided by 1 half will give you 32. So this is 32 miles per hour. Okay. Which one travels faster? That would be the coyote. And then how much farther does a coyote run than a giraffe after three hours? Okay, well, y is equal to 43x. So y is equal 43 miles per hour times three hours, which would give us 129 miles, 32 miles per hour. Y is equal to 32 miles per hour times the number of hours run. So Y is equal to 32 times 3. 32 times 3 would give you 96 miles. Okay, that covers all the problems we're going to do on comparing functions.